friend of the program, Charles Barkley. Yay, hey, Chuck. Yeah. Chuck, how are you, pal? I'm good, guys. Thanks for having me on. Now, you've had to watch this shit show for the last five minutes. Uh, we apologize for keeping you waiting. We appreciate you taking the time. Massive night tonight, Chuck. Play in to start the playoffs. We got LeBron James. We got Steph Curry. Right. We got two young teams. We got a massive night for the NBA. Is this exactly how they wanted it whenever they set up this play-in style for the playoffs, Chuck? Well, I'm not sure they thought they were going to have the Lakers and the Warriors in the play-in. Uh, I don't. I, I think it was really supposed to be for the shit teams. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but you know what? It's great. It's it's actually pretty good. And you got Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler tomorrow night on ESPN. But man, it's going to be too great. And I'm fascinated by both games. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I think this is a really important game for the Pelicans. You know, they played the Lakers twice this year in meaningful games and got humiliated twice. <laughs> they did the championship of the in-season ter tournament. They had to win one game, Pat, one game at home Sunday to avoid the play-in, and they got humiliated again by the Lakers. I really think this is an important game. I really think it's an important game for the Pelicans, for their psyche going forward. And that second game... Man, the Warriors going to have their hands full. They're going to have their hands full with the Kings. The Kings can score with anybody. They can't stop a runny nose, <laughs> but they can flat out score. If you if you remember last year, uh, Steph Curry bailed him out in game seven when he went off for 50. I don't know if he's capable of doing that any longer. So I think I think both games tonight are going to be fascinating. Good for the – you just said something about Steph Curry there that we'll certainly revisit at some point. AJ, you have a question for Chuck? I want to talk about the Warriors. Like, Are we going to – like, is this the last great hurrah for the Warriors? Can, is it possible if they get in that they make a run? And what do they look like next year? Like, Is this something that – are we going to see this core in place moving forward? AJ, uh, number one, good to see you. Let me tell you something. The one thing I know about old people, they just get older. They don't get healthier or they don't get better. <laughs> The, the Warriors are, are done as, as we know them. They got old. You know, when you have as much success as they have, you know, you, you know, it's not like you, you probably guys are fit the same thing when you made a Super Bowl run before. Are you tired going into the next season? But what's happened with the Warriors, man, that wear and tear is taking their toll. The thing with um, Clay, ACL, Achilles has really hurt his game going forward. And you go back, they really kind of messed up on the wise when taking him number two pick in the draft. It worked out, Kaminga's coming on. But the thing with Wiseman's probably been the thing that sent them back the most. But, man, old people, no disrespect, I want to be an old person one day. But old people don't get better. They're just going to be a year older next year. But <laughs> the, the, they're cooked as far as being a championship contender. Yeah, but when you're old and you're retired, you can take science. Yeah. Ooh, you know, sure. these guys in the NBA, they can't take any science. <laughs> so you can get better as you get older now with modern science. You know, I, I'm I'm kind of living proof. These knees feel better than they've ever felt before. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but hey, you know what, Pat? We're not going to put your ass in a game, though. Don't forget that. It's great to walk around. True, true. Yeah, you got it's, great, coming it's up. great to walk around. Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't know if AJ's got any uh, fake body parts. I got two new hips. <laughs> But if he got fake body parts, that don't mean we're going to put him in an NFL game. It looked good walking around, but we're not going to put him in a game more than likely. How are those two new hips? AJ's knees are terrible. He needs two new ones. Big. And him walk hey, him hey, AJ, AJ, let me tell you something. I put it off, and when I got the first hip, I was like, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Then I got the second hip. Man, get it done. It's a godsend. It changed everything about me just walking around in pain all the time. Hey, get all the fake body parts you can. <laughs> <laughs> all right. AJ, you need to do that. AJ, so yeah. his knees, he is a – his gait, especially at the American Century Championship, he is in pain all the time. Yeah. He's like, yeah, this is what life is, though. Yeah, you're just in pain every day. He's from Ohio. You know, he's got that linebacker mentality from Ohio. He's like, yeah, I just hurt. That's – yeah, that's life now. My knees hurt. But what I think what you're saying is he doesn't have to be like that, AJ. Right? That's what you're saying, Chuck? Yeah, because, you know, you want to be able to, 
first of all, you want to walk and play. I mean, there's only a few things old people can do. We play golf and we fish. Now you got some of these crazy idiots out here trying to play pickleball. <laughs> Great sport. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't call it pickleball. I call it a place where old people go and get hurt. Okay. That's, what they should change. that's what they should change the name to. I don't know if that's as uh, catchy. I don't know if that's as catchy as pickleball, Chuck. I don't know if it's It's not sell. nearly as catchy, but, hey, I'm telling you, getting getting uh, artificial parts, man, they, they changed everything. Get it done as soon as possible. All right. So you are obviously a freak athlete, big man. Happy to hear you got two new hips. Also a lot of experience on things, especially things that are coming up like the Olympics. Connor has a question for you, Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. Every time the Olympic roster gets announced, everybody always goes back like, hey, is this team as good as the 92 team? And obviously the squad that they have going right now, it's all the superstars. It's not like last year where they went to FIBA and it was just kind of, you know, Halliburton was on the team, but it wasn't what it is coming up this year. But to that dream team point, when that happens and that debate comes up, a lot of people go to the Redeem team of 2008, but some people say, like, hey, 92 was great, but 96, like, that team could have probably beaten the Dream team, too. You were on both the teams. Do you have any thoughts around that debate, the 92 versus 96 team? And is the 92 team just by far and away the greatest Olympic team ever? Or do you think there are some of those other teams like 96, like the Redeem team, that can hold, you know, a water to that team as well? Well, I think that the, the key is, uh, number one, thank you for a great question. The 92 team was unique because it was the first time. And you have to factor in on all these teams. Uh, I'm not stupid. Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, <laughs> Magic Johnson, the three most important players in NBA history. Uh, you know, people forget the NBA was too black, too thuggish, too many drugs. Um, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird are the two most important figures in NBA history. You know, the average salary when they started was around $200,000. Now the average salary is like $10 million. I, I always tell Magic and Larry every time I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those are the two most important figures in NBA history. Then you factor in Michael Jordan, who's like a supernova, which they don't come along that often so those that's one of the reasons those other teams hey lebron i love lebron lebron is amazing but to have those three guys on that first team nothing can beat that type of star power yeah these other guys are great players but they they didn't do what the nba for what magic michael and larry did and i would never disparage lebron because i think lebron hey man he's amazing he's great 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 but anybody tell you that people are going to be buying his shoes for a billion dollars a year after the guy's been retired for, oof, you know, I think about that. And you have to also factor in, Michael's the first guy who did commercials. So so you have to factor all that in when you're talking about how the, 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 the cultural relevance. You know, my, Magic and Bird and Michael – because of who they were and what they did for the NBA today. The reason Kobe, LeBron make eight, a big $800 million from Nike is because Michael Jordan was the first guy to do it. I mean, you go back and look, think about it. You go back and look at that movie, Air. Oh, yeah, it's a great movie. I was about to talk about it. It's a great movie. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Yeah, but you think, but Pat, you think about it. I, You know, his mom says, uh, you know, we want a percentage of the shoes. They're like, well, and Matt Damon, who was playing Sun, says, well, we don't do it like that. Well, because of Michael Jordan, we do it like that. So to answer your man's question, you got to take in a fact in 92, Magic, Michael, and Larry was such what they did for the NBA. Those other te These other teams are great, great, great. But what those three guys did for the NBA is on a whole nother level. The Magic in Larry Doc, awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, I think it's on NBA TV. I think it's an NBA film. I don't know who created it. It's awesome. Air, awesome. Mm -hmm. The history of basketball and its growth. Semi-pro, obviously. Yep. Mm -hmm. Huge <laughs> part of it all. You know, the, these movies, <laughs> the Flint Tropics, they, they got tropical. Yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't for them, you know, the alley-oop would never exist. Can't we all know that. But those movies tell the story of the NBA in a beautiful fashion. And as you're talking about that dream team and the Olympics, and obviously it's international play, do you think it's your guys' fault that these sports have grown in these countries so much that now the NBA is like so, I mean, right? It's becoming a top 
five top ten players, international players, are taking up a lot of the spots. And the, the, like the game is more global than mm -hmm. it's ever been. I assume the dream team is one of the big factors in that entire thing. 100%, Pat. That's because of David Stern. When David Stern, that was his global vision, and it worked out perfectly. Uh, you know, and listen, I'll tell you something else that's amazing about the dream team. Pat, we had 10,000 people standing outside of the hotel just to get a glimpse of us every day when we would walk to the bus. You have to walk like probably 15 feet from the hotel door to the bus. There was 10,000 people out there every day. There was people along the highway holding signs. We had two police cars in front, two police cars in back. We had an armed motorcycle. We had two guys on motorcycles on the <laughs> side. One guy had a machine gun. Yeah, yeah. And we had a and we had a helicopter above the bus. Jeez. Every time we went to practice into a game, these guys they probably have security, but they didn't have that type of security. <laughs> and, there was, and, there, and there was not ten thousand people standing outside the hotel to see us go to practice a game. And I guarantee you, what they were like, dude, along the highway. People were holding up Bird Magic Michael signs. I tell people to this day, it's one of the most incredible, it's the most incredible. I mean, people are standing along the highway with Jordan Bird Magic signs. You're talking about big guys and lumbering and everything like that. There's a big guy in the nation's first capital who's obviously an MVP but could potentially lead him on. d has got a question for you. Yeah, definitely want to talk about uh, MB and his playoffs, his health, what the Sixers look like going into this playoff run. And then this past weekend, a lot of waves were made with Allen Iverson being added to the Legends walk out there in Philly and his statue. I know yours is out there as well. Bobby Jones, Wilt, a lot of the greats. What was your reaction first time seeing your statue? Did you see the shit that AI was getting? And then obviously your thoughts on the Sixers going into the playoffs this year. Well, it's a, it was such an honor for the Sixers to give me the statue, and AI deserved to be there. AI was a great, great, great player, and he's a good dude too. Uh, it's a really an honor and a privilege to be on, on that uh, on that little walk of uh, fame. It's really cool, but I got to tell you something, Darius. Man, this thing is opening up for the Sixers. I'm telling you because uh oh, and they better win tonight because. I think they beat the Knicks. I really do. I think they beat the. I think the Julius and uh, Julius Randle injury has screwed the Knicks. I think they've got to beat Miami tomorrow night. You first of all, you got a game at home. You got to win that game. Yep. But I think they beat the Knicks. And then I, I forget like they don't. Then that they won't play the Celtics until the conference finals. Yep. So I think this thing is working out perfectly uh, for for the, for my 76ers. How do you feel about the Celtics? Always, you know, like we have uh, Boston Connor is one of the humans mm -hmm. here, and we talk NBA stuff. The Celtics are just assumed to be great. Like they kind of fallen out of the conversation now. It's like they don't they don't get chatted about much day to day. It's like just kind of like, yep, they should be. Mm -hmm. That's how it should go. They should win. Let's talk about everybody else. Do you feel like this is the year the Celtics finally kind of get back into the, the championship conversation? You know, Pat, I'll be shocked. Uh, I'll be shocked if the Celtics don't win the championship. Here we I go. Think they That's are, how everybody think, feels. Guaranteed it. it yeah, feels like. I mean, they, they are. They, I've said that before. I said, yo, man, they got it all. Uh, you know, I think the missing piece was probably Porzingis and Drew Holiday because that gives them size and toughness. Man, if they don't get it done, I mean, it's going to be interesting because, you know, Blow it up. I think this year and next year they got to pay Tatum. Mm -hmm. yep. So they gave Drew uh, – not Drew, they just gave Drew Holiday $150 million if I – somewhere in that range. They gave Jalen Brown $300 million last summer. Ooh. They probably going to have to give Jason Tatum more than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure they can keep all these players together – if they're not going to win the championship. So I think the Celtics are a favorite. I'd be shocked if they don't win it. Uh, I'd be totally shocked if they don't get to the finals. Yeah. But uh, I, the, my favorite in the West is probably Denver. But I'll be totally shocked if the Celtics don't win the championship. It, the Porzingis contract and the Drew Holiday contract actually, too, were pay cuts. 
So even though they got new deals, they it is now less on the cap for that Tatum deal. Because they're paid up. somewhere else. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, bingo. listen, when you give somebody $120, $30 million, <laughs> you still, that's a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. Hey, 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 my man. And let me tell you something. <laughs> I guarantee you, Jason Tatum ain't taking no pay cut. No, three hundred fifty million. Him and Deuce. What? That's because exactly right. If if if, if Jalen Brown got three hundred, I think he got three hundred eight million. Oh my god! J- Jason Tatum's gonna get more than that. Uh huh. Three fifty. And so so now you paying two guys six hundred million dollars. Two guys. Hey, you, uh, basketball's I mean, in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. NBA, basketball's baby. in a good spot. Thank you, Dream Team. Thank you, Michael <laughs> Jordan, shot. Magic, Larry. Thank you, guys. Buddy. Thank you for that entire thing. Also, Brad Stevens, what's his future look like? Well, he's done a fabulous job because I- I'm telling you, if, if they're going to pay everybody, Pat, they should win. They should be the, the championship favorite for the next five years. Why? To be honest with you, because Jason and Tatum and Jalen Brown, they – I think are they over they like 26, 27? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every night, Chuck. Every night. But Jalen Brown's they, left they, hand uh, in the uh, playoffs. They, they they should be they should be the favorite for the next five years. And I'm not just saying that. They should be the favorite for the next five years. With Tatum Brown for Zingas and Drew Holiday, with those four guys, they should be the favorite for the next five years, in my opinion. Hey, Por- good luck up there, Boston. Yep. Yeah, Porzingis also like 26, Chuck. So him as well. You hey, can throw what age did Braun and Jordan and them win? Yeah, funny enough, uh, everyone hates on Tatum and he has to win it this year, but I believe he just turned 26 in March. And I think Steph, LeBron, KD all won their first championship actually at 28 in older, I believe. So he actually has two more years if he wants to be in that category. Nah, the team, though, the money. There's 600 oh. million, two guys. Oh, yeah, it's got to happen now. Here. What's better, going on? better happen now. Hey, uh, Chuck, we can't wait to watch you tonight on TNT, man. Your show is awesome. Hey, hey, you know, Pat, I've been watching y'all for the last few months. And let me tell you something, man. Has the Rock got the best personality, charisma on television? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously Roman – and, and Cody and all those guys are fantastic. But The Rock has the best. Like, he got that thing. It's like when you, you know, AJ, you and, you, and, you and Pat know, when you see a player like, oh, yeah, he's different than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, man, when you see The Rock perform and you're like, he's doing what? What he's was he? Good. 285. He's yeah. 285 pounds. 285 pounds. Just but man, in his personality, oh, yeah. like you whatever when he's talking, you're like, oh yeah, I gotta watch this. Yeah, and, then- and like I like to say, I love Cody, I love Seth freaking Rollins, I love Roman Reigns and Jimmy Big Uso. But man, The Rock, man, when he's on television, he's got that, he's always had it. Oh, but boy. for him to come back and do his thing like he did for all this stuff the last couple months, I'm like, damn, man. He know how to. He got the charisma bug. Yeah, he's got it all the way back. You know, because mm-hmm. he was it, when he was Attitude Era, Hollywood Rock, and The Rock, and everything like that. That launched this entire career on the microphone. There was nothing like him. That he was just he was the guy. And then he's also six foot six, incredibly attractive and jacked. It's like this guy, perfect superstar. So then he goes to Hollywood. They tell him to lose weight, mm-hmm. if you do recall. Then he comes back to WWE, and he's like, I, I think he didn't do his promos. It seems like scripted almost, too scripted, or it felt that way. So then he leaves again. A lot of people were wondering, like, does The Rock still got it? Does The Rock still got it? Mm. He can't, he's got yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I, I was impressed. I, I've known him. We're not great friends, but I've known him for a long time. And when I saw I was like, yo, man, he's got that thing. And when he's working, I want to watch. God, I know he, gonna, he played the heel perfectly. Uh, but his charisma, man, it's an honor. I've been watching a lot lately. But I said, I, I love what you said last night. Yeah, uh, there's a T in Montreal, but it's silent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you have to point out the obvious. That's kind of my expertise out there. 